Christmas. We welcome you all to our service for this Christmas Eve as we rejoice to celebrate the birth of our Savior who brings us life and salvation. For those of us joining us online, if you want to get a copy of the bulletin to follow along with this service, go to our webpage, www.mountcalvarypeoria.org, and then look for news and announcements, and you'll see where you can download the PDF of the bulletin. So please do that. For the rest of you all, um, we invite you to fill out one of the registration cards, drop them off in the offering plate when you depart this evening. If you choose to leave an offering then, you may do so, but we won't be taking one during the service. Uh, we'll bring communion to you in the pew if you're unfamiliar with our practices during the COVID era. So uh, at the time of communion, just stay put and we'll get to you. Um, and with that said, wave at everyone. Everyone look and wave. This is passing the peace in a socially responsible way. And with that said, let us prepare ourselves for worship by listening to the prelude.
All we like sheep have gone astray. We were dead in trespasses and sin. But we were buried with Christ through baptism into his death. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this night we celebrate the holy birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the light who lightens the world. It is he, the mighty one of God, who has rescued us from sin, death, and the devil. Let us therefore make confession of our sin, trusting in the mercy of God for the sake of Jesus Christ, and desiring with a true heart to make amendment of our lives. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your punishment now and forever. But I am heartily sorry for them, sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. The dawn from on high has shined on those who sat in darkness in the shadow of death, guiding our feet into the way of peace. Almighty God has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce the grace of God to you all. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We join in the processional hymn.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness is not overcome. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them has the light shined. We have seen Christ's glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Today, Christ is born. Today, salvation has appeared. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace, good will to men. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, you make this most holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that as we have known the mysteries of that light on earth, we may also come to the fullness of his joys in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated.
first reading this evening is from the prophet Isaiah, the ninth chapter. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelled in a land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Here ends the reading. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join me in the response of singing of Psalm 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and great is to be praised. He is to be feared of all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar, and all that fills it. Let the field exult, and everything in it. Then shall the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for He comes. For He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to Titus, the second chapter. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. Here ends the reading. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the gradual hymn.
According to St. Luke, is recorded in the second chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town, and Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, Praise to you, O
So I bid you all grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers, sisters in Christ, fear not. Behold, I gospelize you with great joy for all people. Fear not. If ever we needed to hear those words and take them to heart, 2020 would seem to be the year. For this year, fear has had a field day. Whether stoked by those who would keep us so bound by anxiety that we can't think straight, or arising from myriad troubles the year has brought, whether from the COVID virus, or worries about the shutdown of large segments of the economy, or heartache over persistent injustice and racial tension, or frustration with the machinations of politicians left and right, this year has stripped the veneer from our superficial confidence and revealed just how many of us are bound by fear. But when the angels told those shepherds outside Bethlehem, fear not, turns out none of those things were in their concern. They weren't worried at that moment about disease or thieves or the price of wool in the commodity market. What had their attention, what filled them with fear was that holy angel. They were face to face with one of God's ministering spirits of fire, an emissary of the mighty one, the Lord, and those shepherds knew that an angel as God's servant could be dispatched to deliver news or could be dispatched to bring judgment. You may remember that one angel took out 186,000 Assyrians besieging Jerusalem at God's command. Those shepherds that night, they didn't know what the angel was there for, to give them a message or to judge them. And so, as the old King James used to put it, they were sore afraid. And yet, what did the angel say? Fear not. I gospelize you with great joy for all people. Now, I know that's not quite how it reads in the bulletin, but the original language doesn't have the angel bringing us good news to just kind of mull over in our heads and reflect on. He does good news to them with this joy that is for all. And what is the joy? There is a child born. And why does that child, Christ the Lord, do good to all of us with great joy? Because he overcomes the condition we're in the one that we inherited from Adam and Eve. We are, on our own, broken, lost, sinful, alienated. That is, we are strangers. We are estranged from God, who is life, who is light, who is good, who is truth. And if we are apart from this God, then we can't really have any of those things, life or light or good or truth, on our own. And worse yet, on our own, we're not terribly worried about that. We're not terribly worried about being alienated from God. I mean, most people walking around out in the world, they're not walking around feeling like, you know, somehow they've got some uh, existential crisis over whether or not they have an authentic connection to the Almighty. What concerns do people carry around with them? Well, you know the list as well as I do. Right? Some people are, are concerned with how they can get ahead in this world. Others are worried about how to get out from under some burden or trouble that weighs on them. Judging from the self-help books that are out there, there are a lot of folks worried about whether or not they're happy or whether or not they can be content, can be at peace, can be successful. And, and that's the short list, right? So is Jesus then really the answer to these questions that folks are concerned about? Or is he the answer to a question that no one's really asking? The answer turns out to be no. Jesus is the gospel. He is good news who is done to us, bringing us joy because he is God come to us in our flesh to restore us and awaken us and renew us. I want you just to take a moment to think about these words from a Christian writer in the 5th century. He said, the mystery of Christ runs the risk of being disbelieved precisely because it is so incredibly wonderful. For God was in humanity. He who was above all creation was in our human condition. The invisible one was made visible in the flesh. He who is from the heavens and from on high was in the likeness of earthly things. The immaterial one could be touched. He who is free in his own nature 
came to us in the form of a slave. He who blesses all creation became accursed. He who is all righteousness was numbered among the transgressors. Life itself came in the appearance of death. And this followed because the body which tasted death belonged to him who is the eternal son by nature. The infinite one became an infant. And in that conception and birth, the chasm between us and God was closed once and for all. In him, Jesus, God come to us with his life and his mercy and his love removes the estrangement. And Jesus come to live our life and to fulfill righteousness and to die our death and to be our resurrection. In Jesus, we are restored to God. In his own flesh, Jesus made the way for us to be able to see the unseeable. In him, our sin is taken away and eternal life is given. And so we have hope. Good news is done to us in Jesus. There is joy for us in this child of Bethlehem. For Jesus came as one of us to end our alienation, to take away the wrath of judgment, and he did that by taking it all on himself. Which means that as you and I are baptized into his death and resurrection, as we hear his word, as we share in the sacrament of this altar, we know that because of his birth we are loved, we are redeemed, we are made new, and we are sent forth from this place with purpose. We are sent out into a cold and frightening world with the call to share the warmth and grace of his life. And the world needs that, my friends. And you and I need that. The angel still speaks to us, saying, Fear not, I gospelize you with great joy for all people. So let us set aside fear and go forth in Christ's light and love and show forth his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Alleluia. Amen. And now may that peace that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until the glorious day of his appearing. Amen. I invite you to stand as we continue for the prayers of the church. And now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Blessed God and Father, fountain of all wisdom and grace, you who promised in ages past to the fathers by the prophets the deliverance of your people, from condemnation, in deepest humility, we give you our thanks and praise for the promise and remembrance of your covenant and the fulfillment of your promises in the gift of your son, Jesus. In spirit, we stand in holy awe and reverence before the manger of the Christ child. The day spring from on high has visited us, and who can search out the limits of his mercy? That God, the Son of God, should take our mortal form for mortal sake. Who can examine this mystery? That light and life should be given to those who abide in the darkness of evil. Who can know what divine counsels decreed so great a thing for unworthy sinners like us? O oh God, how unsearchable are your judgments and your ways past finding out. We bow in reverence and wonder. For the giving of this, your Son, most beloved, we thank you, O Father. Yes, we praise, we loud and magnify you forever. We bless you for the establishment of your kingdom here upon this stained and weary earth, even among us who deserve only that you should hide your face because of our iniquities. As we assemble to worship you and to contemplate the mysteries of the incarnation, wherein the Son of the Most High took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in likeness of us men and women, grant us a sense of gratitude and joy that life, hope, and faith may be renewed in each of us, and that each one may find in this babe of Bethlehem the way of salvation, the remission of sins, the deliverance from every evil power, and the hope of life everlasting. O Lord, in your mercy, hear us this evening as we bring our concerns to you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We remember those serving the armed forces on active duty, especially those who are deployed or otherwise away from their families. Bless them and their families with your love and joy in Christ and guard all those who are in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, 
Grant that the incarnate Savior may rule in the hearts of all men and women everywhere. Extend the dominion of the Prince of Peace to all nations of the earth. Give growth in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ to your church, that even as the great snows cover the mountains, the waters fill the ocean chasms, and the clouds cover the vast plains, so may your church abound in love, joy, and peace, in faith and every good work. To this end, help us, O God, to proclaim the glad tidings of our Savior's birth in church, in home, in school, in shop, and in marketplace. Use each of us, young and old, according to our talents and abilities. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to all, for it is into your hands, O Lord, that we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the mercy that you have revealed in your Son, the Christ child, Jesus, our Lord and King, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated as I prepare the table. I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may be drawn to love those things which are not seen. Therefore, we pray as your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Amen. You may be seated as we sing the Lamb of God. May the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most precious blood strengthen you in true faith, granting you the forgiveness of sins and a life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the post-communion canticle. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. 
Christ our Lord, 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 And now, Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, keep you in his light and truth and love, now and forevermore. Amen. You may extinguish your candles as we sing Joy to the World.
A quick word of thanks to Mr. Eric Hippel, who performed so admirably on the trumpet and flute for us. Uh, we are appreciative that he took time away from his family and their worship to be with us tonight, so thank you, Mr. Hippel, for sharing your talents. He is the fine arts director over at Concordia, and so we appreciate all that God does through him there. And with that said, I bid you all go in peace. The service has ended. Merry Christmas! <laughs>